What is up guys, we will you YouTuber here back with another video and welcome to yet another series which I have created which is entitled Cards Which Change the Game. Um, I've sort of taken the idea from Simex Team Symmetry looking at all the retro cards. I thought that was a really good idea because I've been playing the game since the beginning and more than likely so is he and a lot of people on YouTube. So for that reason I want to go over some of the cards which people may not know uh, have influenced the game so greatly and changed it so much. Uh, cards which might not even be used anymore, cards which have more than likely been re-released since that time, several times possibly, and uh, but in any case, the game was a lot different back then, it was a lot slower, uh, it was a lot more paced, um, there, were, there was a huge imbalance in the sets between the common cards and the secret rare cards and the ultra rare cards, um, that isn't really the case today, I mean there's some pretty overpowered commons nowadays, and uh, nowadays it's generally more archetype specific, which wasn't really the case back then. But in any case, today we're going to be talking about Jinzo. The reason I'm talking about Jinzo is because the basic theme for Fair Servant was Spell and Trap Negation, and Jinzo was the first one chibi monster that wasn't Summon Skull that could actually do something. Uh, 2400 attack was of course below that of Summon Skull, but his face of effect was just too darn good not to use, uh, that is, negating all trap cards, which was just amazing. This is actually a perfect example of Konami releasing a card that was ridiculously overpowered compared to the other super rares, rares, and commons within that set. And remember, this, of course, was when uh, Special Summoning was virtually non-existent and Trap Hole was basically the boss trap of the meta. And the fact that Trap Hole couldn't affect Jinzo was just amazing. It completely altered the way people thought about the game. And as I said, it prompted a lot of people to learn about chain links, and that spell speed 3 was a very important spell speed. I mean, the strategy that a lot of people had back in the day, of course, they would have all their staple spell cards. They would run Rush Recklessly, which uh, is a quick play spell card that increased the attack by 300. They'd run that in multiples, and they would build an entire deck around Jinzo's. And so whenever anyone would try and attack over Jinzo, uh, they would just use Rush Recklessly to get him to 3100 attack points. The only downside, of course, is that he would affect your own traps as well. But if people were running Jinzo in multiples, they would not run any trap cards. Of course, there were ways around him. The two most noble ones at the time were Horn of Heaven and Solemn Judgment, the most popular one today. Solemn Judgment was at 3 back then, as was Horn of Heaven. But Horn of Heaven was a minus 1 because you're tributing a monster on your side of the field. That's considering when Special Summoning wasn't that popular, and it took you long enough to get your field set up as it is. Even though people were running stuff like Nimble Mamanga and stuff that could bring out multiple copies of itself, it didn't really matter because it was generally a slower game, and if you were going Horn of Heaven on a Jinzo, it could potentially save you, don't get me wrong. But Solemn Judgment was by far the better option, and of course people learned that with the negation of a summon, the monster is technically never on the field, and so its effect never applies. That is something that people actually didn't really know about before Jinzo came into play. I suppose technically he was a broken card back then, uh, basically, he could just keep attacking over any monster your opponent set or summoned. As long as he could get over the tribute monster that they had on the field, like it was Blue Eyes White Dragon, he'd be 3100 attack, so we could attack over him. If it was Summoned Skull, again, he'd be 3100 attack with Rush Recklessly. And of course, he would main deck three Fissures uh, to get over all those pesky monsters. So, really, there's not really much that can stand against a Jinzo if you keep attacking over monsters, they keep setting stuff. All there was back then was the normal summon at the set, and those people who like to mine us off using polymerization, which even back then wasn't that good except for Thousand Eyes Restrict. People generally ran Beatdown back then with the likes of Malevol Malevolent Nuzzler, an equip spell that boosts the attack by 700 points, and other stuff like that. Uh, that was really the only way to get over uh, the likes of Jinzo, and if you brought him out at the right time, it could just cause a huge problem, and he completely changed the game. I cannot underestimate how much he changed the game for people. Um, if somebody had a Jinzo at the locals and nobody else had a Jinzo, they would pretty much win at locals. That was just the way it was. Jinzo himself actually sheds light on a problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, which is increasing standards. Basically, Konami reads a card that is really, really good at a particular time for two or three formats, and then they release a card that's similar to it, but slightly better, in order to uh, keep up with standards. Um, it's a game that is going to snowball, I feel, uh, that Konami are playing, because they're going to keep releasing cards that are more and more overpowered, and that there are better and better versions of previously released cards, until eventually the game is going to be so full of overpowered decks, just like it was in this format, that we're not really know, gonna know what to do. But Wind-Ups and Insectors uh, nowadays, they're overpowered, don't get me wrong, but we weren't surprised when Konami released decks like these, because the tier 1 decks here nowadays are really tier 1 decks, I mean they're quick, they special summon a lot, they swarm, the loop, mm, that is a little bit much, that's fair enough. But back then, when Jinzo was released, we were just like, okay, there's nothing that can negate trap cards. There's nothing that can even shut me down. Shutting someone's skull is amazing. Let's just win with someone's skull or whatever. But Jinzo comes out and everyone's just like, oh my god, this guy is completely game-changing. Completely alters the way we play Yu-Gi-Oh! And the question, of course, are there cards nowadays that are analogous to that? 
Or is the game just full of so many overpowered cards that Konami can't even compensate for the amount of mistakes that they've made by releasing these archetypes, that they just decide to release more and more of them, and it's in a, this kind of snowballing effect. But in any case, Jinzo was a boss when he first came out, and for that reason, I want to know if you guys used him back in the day. Did you play Yu-Gi-Oh! back in 2003 and 2004? And if so, did you enjoy it as much as you do today? Uh, did you use Jinzo? And if so, why? I mean, you don't really need to explain why, he's awesome. Uh, but do you think there are cards nowadays that are just as overpowered or that could compare to the quality of Jinzo and the effect that he had on the game? Or do you think Konami are just, as I say, snowballing, releasing a bunch of overpowered arch archetypes one after the other? Okay guys, that is it for the video. Thank you so, so much for watching as always. Be sure to comment, rate and subscribe. Uh, it turned from a bit of a discussion into a bit of a rant, I have to be honest, and I apologise for that. But the reason is because I feel that this format has got me thinking about the way Yu-Gi-Oh! used to be and how much I used to enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, I still enjoy it nowadays, don't get me wrong, but it's a completely different game uh, than what I remember. It used to be a lot slower, as I say, a lot uh, more paced. Uh, it used to take a lot longer to take 8,000 life points off your opponent, because you were just normal summoning and tribute summoning. Special summoning wasn't really an issue. You weren't able to get 5 or 6 mon five monsters, <laughs> 5 or 6, 5 monsters on the field in one turn, and you certainly weren't able to OTK as effectively. Um, but in any case, let me know what you think of the video, let me know what you think of Jinzo. Did you guys play the game back then, and if so, did you use Jinzo? Uh, you don't really need to give a reason why, because he's awesome. Uh, do you think there are any cards analogous to him today that were equally as broken as Jinzo was and had equally as great an effect on the metagame? But anyway guys, I will talk to you guys later. As I said, comment, rate, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to check out some of my other videos coming up soon. I have more series videos, uh, answers to the meta, as well as some other rules of the game. I also have a, a backlog of dual videos that I still need to upload. I'm just going to check the quality of them to make sure the graveyard isn't like obscured from you like it is in some of my videos. But in any case, uh, thanks for watching guys. I will catch you guys later. See ya. Peace.